Okay guys, Sam here. I'm in the bush right now. Um, haven't got my gun on me, um, but I've got my trail camera here and I'm in a bit of public land and um, yeah, I'm going to set up a trail camera. Um, so I couldn't go hunting this morning, but I still want to get out in the bush. So I've got my trail cam back and um, decided why not chuck it out in here. I've always wanted to put it here in this general area. It's what I call the pig maze because <laughs> um, it's a bloody maze, but there's pigs everywhere. Um, and I'm going to set it up basically on this tree, looking out this way, so there's a beautiful game trail that comes along this way and goes off that way, and there's another game trail that comes from that way to here, and there's heaps of footprints, I mean all over the place, look at that, it's a pretty good mark there, um, over here, over here, check this out, some awesome footprints. And that log has been, look at that, all the moss and stuff has been rubbed off it because um, things have been, you know, rubbing against it, jumping over it. There'll be pigs and stuff going over that. So yeah, I'm just going to set it up here. And while I'm at it, I want to just show you guys a couple tips that um, I use when setting up a trail camera. So the first trick is obviously picking a spot. Right, so as I just showed you, this is a beautiful spot. It's nice and open and there's not too much stuff that's going to move around directly in front of the camera and set it off um, without there being an animal there that's really important so I might you know break some of these branches here just to really kind of clear the area um, this is this is a major reason why I chose this spot because it's so super open so hopefully any animal coming along will you know set those off to move over there but those shouldn't move too much in the wind um, and there's not really any foliage around here that could blow in front of the camera. I'm going to take this thing down because these thingies here could set off the side sensors so I'll whip that over to the other side. The next main thing is positioning. Now these Nico Palms that I've got this one on are freaking awesome because they're so flat and smooth so the trail cam's actually nice and, and straight. Sometimes you'll get a tree that's on a bit of an angle <clears throat> or something like that and you can just basically grab a stick and um, kind of wedge it in behind to get it as straight as possible because it just looks nice you don't really want a whole tilted sort of thing and it makes the ground look a bit weird and and whatnot um, but so that's one thing and also the direction it's facing so here will be alright because it's under cover it's under the bush but if you're looking over a clearing or something you've got to look at where the sun is because you don't want the sun to be going directly in front because first off if it takes a picture of an animal or films an animal the sun's going to be behind it and you're not going to see very well you kind of you want the sun kind of behind the camera lighting up your target area rather than the sun behind it and it just makes everything gloomy and dark but also the sun for some cameras depending on their sensitivity the sun actually moves across the sky fast enough to actually set the camera off and then you're just going to fill it it's going to take a day and you're going to have filled up your sd card because the sun's just moved across or clouds will move across or or the sun will filter through the trees a certain way and, and look like movement and set the camera off um, so that's all stuff you've got to kind of take into consideration as well um, and then the third thing with positioning is obviously height um, so in this area we've got pigs and fallow so um, and in the odd goat as well I imagine um, so we don't need the camera to be super high because if you have it too high you're going to see the ears and you're going to see the tips of antlers or whatever um, if, you see it too, if you set it too low you're just going to see their feet um, so here I've got a, a, a pretty good height I reckon it's about I don't know probably not quite a meter off the ground um, yeah and you just got to kind of look out get to its height and basically that's what we're going to be seeing because the camera's got quite a wide kind of angle to it um, and yeah I mean obviously it's hard to know um, what the perfect angle is and you kind of need to experiment a little bit with your camera um, to figure it out because it might be a little bit higher a little bit lower than what you're anticipating so if you're if you're using the same area you know multiple times then you can um, just adjust it accordingly you know go back a week later and see if anything's walked past and kind of see um, but if you're moving around like to a different spot every few weeks like I'll, I'll be doing um, yeah you just gotta kind of guesstimate and you know chances are she'll be right to be honest um, so yeah that's positioning
Right, so now that all the vegetation has kind of been cleared away from in front of the camera and off to the side, because this camera has these side sensors here, so anything kind of over here, not actually in the frame, will still set it off. Um, so, anyway, so, bloody hell, <coughs> wood pigeon or something dropping stuff down in there. Anyway, so once you've got the positioning sorted and you've got the location sorted, the final thing, this is very American of me, bait. <laughs> oh, you obviously don't have to do this. This is a bit of an experiment to be honest. I think keeping it wild has done this too, but I just wanted to do it myself as well. So I've got here an entire iceberg lettuce. Um, not contaminated by human smell as of yet, so that'll be interesting to see. So I'm basically gonna open the bag and just drop it and try not to touch it with my bare hands. Here we've got a broccoli, a, a vegetable that I grew up really not liking, but because it's so cheap and I have to feed myself now, I've actually eaten quite a lot of recently. And then some apples. So obviously I'll take the stickers off, <laughs> so nothing eats a sticker. Um, but yeah, something a bit sweet, and what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to break one of these open, um, just to really get the smell out there. Um, because obviously pigs have an awesome sense of smell and it'll be interesting to see A, if my scent on them affects it that much, it might make them a bit, you know, hesitant um, and yeah, this is assuming that a pig comes and eats it or a deer, that'd be cool to see a deer munching on some broccoli or some, or some lettuce um, chances are that there's going to be rats and possums coming in first and eating everything but hopefully um, at least within the next couple days, at, you know, maybe tonight, who knows, something might come through and eat it, because um, pigs are a bit different, but for deer at least, ground scent doesn't actually matter that much, because a deer's head is far enough off the ground, usually, that um, they don't really pick up that scent on the, on the ground that much. Um, the deer have evolved really to scent in the air. Um, Actually, sp speaking of deer, I forgot to mention I bloody spooked a deer walking in here. Um, I didn't take my gun because I just wanted to fully guarantee that I saw something. And, uh, you know, Murphy's Law, <laughs> of course I frickin' saw something. Um, haven't seen any pigs. Seen a bit of pig sign, like all this stuff, and there's always pigs living in here, so... But anyway, we'll lay out the, all, these, uh, all these vegetables and, and fruit, and uh, we'll see uh, what eats what. Alrighty, and now, of course, the most important step, the final and most important step that a surprising number of people forget is turning the camera on. <laughs> so this is a Dassun trail camera. Um, this is an awesome little camera that Dassun actually sent me. Um, and I've talked about this on previous videos, but it is freaking awesome. And I've had people um, contact me and say that they've bought one and um, they've, you know, they used it to shoot their first whitetail, that was cool. Um, I've heard, you know, people telling me that they've bought them and they absolutely love them. Um, so, if you want to get one of your own, I've got a deal going with Dassun. Um, so you can get 20% off um, if you use the code SAM20 at, um, you know, when, when you buy them online on the website. Um, and yeah, they're just an awesome, perfect beginner's um, trail camera. And they're cheap too there. It's, if you use my code, it's 80 American dollars. Um, so that's like a hundred, just over a hundred NZ dollars, I believe. Um, and it's mean, and it's, it's, it's still cheaper than a lot of like the other trail cameras, I'm pretty sure. And it's freaking bang for your buck. It is mint. I haven't had any problems with it. So, uh, anyway, I've got it set up to, um, take photos and video. Um, so we'll take a photo first and then start recording straight away. Um, we can obviously record at night time and stuff. We've got a thunderstorm coming in tomorrow, so it'll be interesting to see if, um, yeah, it, it, I'm sure it'll survive that. It survived pretty, almost snowy conditions too, actually, in Wellington. So this should be a piece of piss for it. But uh, anyway, I'll just flick it to on. There we go, the countdown is on. Click it up. And, uh... Yeah, easy as, and then just head back to the car, come back in a couple weeks, and we'll uh, see what has eaten our broccoli, lettuce, and apples. Alrighty, I'll uh, see you guys in a couple weeks. Just saying.
case and the wind's been pretty bad. I spooked a deer on the way in here again. Um, it just caught my wind and ran off. I never saw it, but I knew it was a deer. Um, and I'm pretty sure there was a pig smashing up some bushes or something around here not too long ago. But the wind swelled and it might have gotten my wind. I didn't hear it run, but there might still be animals in the area. So I'm just going to kind of whisper. But yeah, hopefully you guys can hear me. Um, the first thing I've noticed, which is great, is that the camera's still here. So that's always good when you're on public land. It's always a little bit. There's always that thought in the back of your mind that someone might come along and bloody nick it. Um, so good to see that it hasn't been nicked. Um, and the second thing I've noticed is that all of the bait, the, the broccoli and the entire lettuce and the apples are all gone. Um, so that's a good sign. It means animals have come by and eaten it. Um, so I'm really excited to have a look at the camera and uh, see what's uh, walked past. So yeah, let's have a look. Alrighty. Oh, who's that sexy fella right there? Um, okay, we've got one hundred. We've got over a hundred videos. That's awesome. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that um, nothing had come through in front of the camera just before I arrived. Um, but now nah, something. The last thing that went past was last night, I think, or the night before. Um, but I think we're going to have quite a bit of footage. There's one, over one hundred photos and videos. So. That's very promising, but um, anyway, I'll either see you guys at home, or see you guys 100 meters up that way when I shoot something. Alrighty. Alrighty guys, uh, I'm back home, I uh, didn't see anything on the walkout, I'm pretty sure I had a couple pigs like walk past me, like I heard them, I heard like a little tree get pushed over and stuff like that, but didn't see anything and the wind was swirly and bad, so yeah. Anyway. I'm back home now. Um, I've got the footage, and the footage is actually really cool. Um, so what I'm going to try do, I'm going to try something a bit different. I'm going to try kind of play the footage with some music, and then do a bit of a commentary over it. Um, don't know why, <laughs> um, but I'm just going to try it something new, I guess. Um, so I don't know. It's a bit new. I've never done it before. Not many people on YouTube have really done it before. I don't think. So let me know what you think. Um, if you enjoy it, let me know. If you think it's weird and you'd rather just watch the stuff with music, then also let me know um, so that I know not to do it again. I don't know, I'm a bit on the fence about it at the moment, but figured why not? Might as well give it a bit of a try. Um, so, yeah, anyway, let's, uh, let's watch this footage. Sweet as. Alrighty, time to give this whole commentary thing a go. We'll see how it goes. So I basically we're gonna play this footage through and um, I'm just gonna speak over top of it because if there's one thing these videos need, it's uh, more of my voice. Anyway, right, so that's me heading off into the bush. So uh, as you can see there, we've got the lettuce, the broccoli and a couple apples. So we'll see if anything comes and eats them. Alrighty, our first animal was a possum by the looks of it. Just a good old possum, basically what I expected, the first thing to see. Mm, there's a moth. Alrighty, fast forwarded basically 24 hours and I've got a wild cat. I was, wasn't expecting to see that. Um, although, nah, I suppose it makes sense, but now yeah, I wasn't expecting a wild cat, but it looks like there's wild cats in here. And everything's in the same place and whoa, check out this fella. Ah, another hunter. Look at him. He's obviously seen the camera, and he's off. Cool shoes. <laughs> that's that's quite funny. Um, he's obviously seen the apple, seen the broccoli, and gone what the heck, and then seen the camera. Um, good on you, mate, for not stealing the camera. Thanks for that. I uh, hope your hunt was successful. <laughs> Alrighty. Anyway, uh, not sure what set the camera off here. Uh, it's been three days now, the 22nd. Everything's still in place. Oh, there goes a possum with a baby. You see that? There's a, there's a, there's a baby possum on the back of that possum. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Um, also, the apples are gone. What? Okay. Oh, here's a deer. G'day mate, that looks like a very pregnant deer. Looks like she hasn't dropped a fawn yet. Oh, there's one apple still there. She's sniffing around, she's not too sure. She looks like an old, old mature doe. Holy moly, look at this fella. Bloody hell, oh, there he goes. Man, what a 
tank. Look at the size of that thing. Bloody hell, I'm going to put that next to the deer. It's bigger than the deer. Holy crap, what a beast. What a tank of a pig. All right, that's a good reason to go back into here. Far out, that thing was huge. When is he coming through? Three in the morning. Oh, here's another piggy. Another boar by the looks of it. I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm putting that tank next to this pig again. Just look at the size difference. Holy crap. I don't know how big this pig is. I don't think it's huge. Um, but that big boar is freaking massive. <laughs> Bloody hell. Right, anyway, sorry. Um, meanwhile, old mate's just, uh, oh, giving the broccoli a sniff. Uh, not too much of a fan by the looks of it. Fair enough. This dude doesn't seem to be super hairy, eh? He's got a bit of a dorsal stripe going, but you can see his skin real clear, like he's not that he's not that dark. If you notice that, like you know what I mean? Like he looks um it kinda looks like the werewolf from Harry Potter. <laughs> he's just milling around. He's got a cool stripe on him. Alrighty, next day, uh, the 27th this time, and there's another pig. Oh, I wonder if it's the same one. Far, that's hard to tell. It looks about the same size. I think it's another boar. Oh, it might not be. Man, that's hard to tell. Oh, no, same day, same time. Like, my camera just can't decide whether or not to switch to night vision or not. Nah, okay, I think I can definitely see a uh, an appendage that a, a boar would have, not a sow. Um, yeah, same time, 5.30 in the morning. Nice and light, eh? Um... Yeah, another boar sniffing around. One of his found... Oh, the apple's disappeared. There was another apple there. That's gone. Oh, jeez. Don't know when that disappeared. So the lettuce and the broccoli are still there. No idea where the apples are gone. They probably got eaten by rats and possums. And Oh, our boar's got a, a necklace now. Mm. Doesn't seem to be too fast. There he is again. Oh, still wearing the necklace. Mm. Good on you, mate. <laughs> very, very fashionable. So as we're looking at nothingness here, I'm gonna, we've seen three boars, three different boars, and a couple deer. Oh, make that, yeah, make that a couple deer. But I've only seen one, but now there's two. This is the, oh, this is only like an hour after that black boar came through. So that's cool. Another fellow. Nice young looking fellow doe there. She's sniffing around the, uh, the broccoli a bit. That's kind of cool. She's got cool skin on her. She looks quite young, she doesn't look like... I wonder if she has a fawn with her. Mm. She doesn't look like she has a fawn. I don't know. We would probably see the fawn if it... We would probably see it come into frame, to be honest. Oh, no, there she goes. She's walking off and I'm not seeing a fawn with her. So, that's good to know, for future reference. It is the 27th of the 12th on this date, so if she was going to have a fawn, you'd think she would have dropped it by now. So, maybe she's too young. Oh, she's come back a couple hours later. I wonder if she's going to eat any of the vegetables. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, that's the stuff. Oh, some rotten lettuce leaf. Oh, yum. Oh, that's what you folks came here to see, isn't it? See a, a deer eat some lettuce. <laughs> How exciting. Look at her go. Good on her. Awesome. I fed her. Now, uh, hopefully. She can return the favour and she can feed me. I didn't like that idea. She's pretty skinny, eh? Oh no, she's not too bad. She looks like she's at the age where she should probably have a fawn, to be honest, so I'm a bit surprised she doesn't have one in tow with her. Maybe she does. I don't know. I don't know too much, but I thought a fawn would be following its mum around quite a bit, so... This time of year it's always pretty touchy, but it's good to know that if I see this one, I might be more inclined to shoot it if um, I know it doesn't have a fawn on it. I don't know. I have to encounter a deer in here first, so... Eh, off she goes. Oh! Mama Pig! Coming past with one, two, three piglets? Oh yeah, look at them all. Oh, bye. Alrighty, night time now. Still on the 27th. Man, this has been a busy day. Here comes this fella. Is this our werewolf Harry Potter pig? I think it might be. Sniffing around the... Uh, yeah, it definitely is. There we go. Sniffing around. So he's frequenting the area quite a bit. I wonder what he's eating there. I 
think that's a Nikau palm actually that he's at the base of, so it's probably eating the Nikau um, berries that fall down, those little red ones. Yeah, I'd, I'd say that's probably what he's chowing down on, looking all rooting around there. That's cool. 22, so 10 o'clock at night on the 27th. Man, this was a busy day, the 27th. Yeah, look, I'm just rooting around there. Possum coming through an hour later. Still on the same day. Oh, oh, he's found the broccoli! Yes, go, mate. Finally, something's eaten the broccoli. Man. And, of course, it was a possum. Nope. Oh, wow. Almost 24 hours have passed now. Cruising on through. Not stopping to eat more rotten lettuce. 28th again. There's that black pig. See, that's a different one, eh? So, yeah. It's that black boar. So, we've got the Harry Potter werewolf boar. We've got that black one. And then... We've got that absolute tank of a boar. Oh, here comes our werewolf Harry Potter fella again. Nope. It's the 29th, this is a couple days later. Sniffing around. He frequents the area quite a bit, eh? He must have a bit of a loop that he does. He's He comes through fairly consistent. Oh, there's the possum with his baby! Man, that baby's a bit big, eh? <laughs> I think you need to move away, move out of home soon, mate. You're taking up a bit of space. Oh, oh, he's listening to me. Oh, yeah, there we go. Look at him. Cheeky little bugger. There he goes. There he is. There's our tank again. Man, look at that thing. Bloody hell, that's a big pig. Look at the, oh, look at the razorback it's got on it. Bloody hell. That's a big, big fella. Far out. I'm not sure what the camera's filming here. This is the 31st. This is New Year's Eve. Oh, there goes Possum. Oh, giving us a bit of a show. Alrighty, pig coming through. Obviously heading home after a New Year's Eve party by the looks of it. I'd like to tell you what I was doing at, at this time. <laughs> 20, 20 past 12 in the, on the 1st of January, but uh, I'm afraid I can't really remember. <laughs> um, oh, there's our Possum. Obviously still drunk by the looks of it from, her, from his New Year's party he's just come from. Here's our werewolf Harry Potter again. A Harry Potter werewolf pig, I should say. There he goes. Oh, there's our black fella. Our good old black boar, man. You can kind of see his tusks, eh? Cruising on through the second of the first. This is the day before I arrived, I believe. I think. Oh, jeez. Yep, there I am. Bloody hell. All right. Cut it off. Cut it off. Cool. So, uh, yeah, that was the footage. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, it was a real cool little experiment. I was a bit of a shame that literally all three things, the apples, the lettuce, and the broccoli, they all kind of just disappeared in between shots, and we don't really see how they disappeared. So I don't know what happened there. Maybe I should have turned the sensitivity a bit further up on the um, on the trail cam. But it's really, like, like, the broccoli just seemed to just disappear. I'm thinking what happened is maybe a possum or something just kind of dragged it so it was out of its field of view and then, you know, other things came along and ate it and picked it up and took it away and the camera just didn't pick it up. I'm guessing that's kind of what happened. Um, I don't know. But anyway, it was a cool little experiment and I'll probably do it again at some point to be honest because it was, uh, yeah, real interesting to see and it's always cool seeing what's in the area. But uh, anyway, I'm going to wrap the video up here. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to um, let me know if you actually enjoyed that commentary or not. Comment down below and let me know so I know whether or not to do it again in the future. Um, also, don't forget to follow NZ Chronicles on Instagram if you want to. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. See you later.